Hey guys, what's up? It's Charlie here and today we're going to be looking at 10 things you didn't know about your body. So these are some amazing and sometimes scary facts about your body. But these are really strange and I doubt most of you have ever heard these facts before. So guys, be sure to like the video and subscribe and comment I subscribed and I'll try to reply to all of you. So coming in at number 10, we have ear holes. So I'm sure you guys have all seen someone who has this tiny hole just above their ear before. And who knows, maybe you guys even have this hole. Well, the reason behind these tiny holes is that it's technically a genetic defect. It's called having a preauricular sign. And it was first noticed by a doctor back in 1864. But here's where it gets crazy. It's been revealed that it's actually back from when we evolved from fish. And the holes are actually a result of fish gills. And if you have one, then don't worry, it's not usually an issue, but occasionally these holes can become infected or form into a cyst. And if that ever happened, treatment may be needed and the hole may need to be filled in. And only 0.1% of American people are born with this, and 0.9% of European people are born with it. Hmm, maybe that's why I've seen so many people with this. Anyway, these are often passed down through genetics, and they can occur on either ear or both ears. But next up, we have gum beads. So this one is going to really worry you guys, but this is something you need to know before you brush your teeth again. So you might have seen little blue or green dots in some people's teeth or gums before, and I hate to be the one to tell you, but this can be a big deal. The blue beads are ironically in some toothpaste brands, and they're just decorative and don't do anything. But sometimes, if you use this toothpaste with the beads and brush too hard, the beads can get trapped in between your teeth and your gums. And the bad thing about these beads is that they're made of plastic, so they never dissolve and they'll always be stuck there. And it can sometimes get infected and give you gum diseases. And the really stupid thing about this is that the micro beads don't help with cleaning or with the flavor, they're just for decoration, but they harm you. But next up, we have don't poop at night. So we all know it's a common problem that people get up in the night to go to the bathroom to pee. But how can we never get up in the night with a need to poop? Well, it's actually because your body won't let you. That's right, when you sleep, you rest. And so do certain parts of your body, including the neutrons in your gut, which are the things that make you need to go. And when you wake back up, the neutrons will also wake back up and make you want to go again. If only the neutrons that made you pee also slept when you do. But next up, we have nice sweat. So if I was to say sweat, you'd probably think of gross things like bad smells. But despite what you've been told your whole life, it's not actually the sweat that smells bad. It's actually the bacteria that's attracted to your sweat. That's right, millions and millions of tiny bacteria grow on your sweat and feed on it, and then they dispose of it, as in poop it out. So the smell you're giving off is actually bacteria poop, which doesn't exactly make sweat any less gross. But next time somebody complains about you smelling bad, you can just blame it on bacteria. But next up, we have back dimples. So some people have back dimples, but no one really knows what it means. And it's a commonly known myth that it means you have a great sex life. But guys, that myth is true. Scientists have found that people with back dimples have orgasms more easily. But how does something on your back help with sex? Well, the dimples provide good circulation around the pelvis area that helps you orgasm. And unfortunately, there's no way to get back dimples. You have to be born with them. But some people don't think they have back dimples when really they do, because they only show up if you're fairly skinny. And if if you're skinny and still don't notice them, then don't worry, you can still orgasm. It's just easier for people with back dimples. But coming up next, we have pain toggle. So you've probably heard the phrase pain threshold before, which is how much pain you can handle before you start screaming and crying. Well, even if you don't technically see yourself as strong, every human has a great pain threshold. But it's not down to strength. It's actually to do with your brain, because your brain can turn your pain receptors on and off. And there have been several occasions where people have been badly injured and often broken bones and sometimes even had limbs missing, but the people only felt a minor pain at first. But then obviously the pain does come later, but at least it's more gradual. So all that time working out your muscles won't help you as much as your brain if you get hurt. But next up, we have tongue prints. So I'm guessing that we all know that we have a unique fingerprint that only you have, which is why fingerprint sensors are so secure. But what many people don't know is that their tongue print is also unique. And most people don't even know they have a tongue print because it's not as obvious and clean looking as a fingerprint. Because instead of a swirly pattern like on your finger, tongue prints are made up of bumps, curves, and dents. But I can't see these replacing fingerprint sensors anytime soon. Then again, with all the dumb ideas that Apple's been having recently, you never know. But next up, we have your feet grow. So as you get older and become elderly, your body usually shrinks in size. And by body, I mean your general height. But something that actually grows as you age is your feet. Your feet obviously grow when you're a kid going into being an adult, but then they stop growing until you reach your golden years and then they begin to grow again. And the reason why is that the tendons and ligaments that link up all of the tiny bones in your feet lose elasticity. And then this will make the arches in your feet flatter and wider. And the only way to stop this is actually by not exercising. because 
the more you exercise when you're young, the more your feet will grow as you get older. But having big feet isn't necessarily a bad thing, but exercise is definitely good. So I recommend you guys still exercise, even if you might need to buy a bigger pair of running shoes in later life. And next up we have dumb and old. So a lot of people assume that when you get older you get wiser and more experienced. And while that may be true, one thing you do lose as you get older is intelligence. Because each day you're alive you lose over 11,000 brain cells, so multiply that by 60 and that's 660,000 brain cells gone. And that's one reason why old people can be so forgetful, because they lose brain cells and it can affect their memory. The good thing about me is that I'm already dumb, so I don't have to worry. Wait, that is how it works, right? But next up we have crying is good. So when you get badly hurt physically, you sometimes cry. But a lot of people, especially men, are sometimes embarrassed to cry when they're hurt. Because they think it makes them look weak or like a sissy. But what most people don't know is that it's actually good to cry when you're hurt. Because having tears leave your eyes can create less pain from your injury. They can also help with the stress related to your injury and relaxes your brain. And tears contain endomorphins, which are what's used in painkillers, so it can actually help you relieve pain from your body. So next time you're badly hurt, let the waterworks flow. Even if people might think you're being a little bit overdramatic. 10 odd things your body says about you. So it turns out that our body parts can reveal a lot of things about us from our emotions, lifestyle and even health issues that we may not even know about. So coming in at number 10 we have tongue. So our tongues are really important even if it doesn't appear like they are. And experts say there's some interesting information you can tell about a person just by the way their tongue looks. If you have a very red, dark or pale tongue then that's a symbol of infection or a serious medical condition. So get them to get that checked out before you kiss them or share food with them. If you have a swollen tongue then that means you're experiencing too much stress. And if you have a sore tongue then that means you need to put out that cigarette because you've been smoking too much. And if your tongue's bright blue then that means you've been eating lollipops and you should probably give them all to me. So coming up next we have lips. So lips are another way to reveal things about people's lifestyles. If you have dark lips then that means you're smoking too much. If you have cracked or pale lips then that's a sign you're not getting enough zinc, iron or vitamin D in your diet. And if you have very full lips then that means you're healthy and less likely to develop health or mental issues. And if you have lips like this then you probably need to hire a better plastic surgeon. So next up we have fat. So when you look at a fat person you probably just think they're eating too much. And that may be one of the issues but scientists have recently discovered that there's more to body fat than most people think. And it's all to do with the location of fat on your body which can tell people what sort of lifestyle you live. For example, a fatty upper body means you're eating too much, a lot of upper back fat means you're not getting enough exercise, and if someone has a large lower abdomen they're probably suffering from anxiety or depression. And a swollen stomach or beer belly as it's also known means you're drinking way too much. So have fun finding out what people's lifestyles are just by their stomach, but just don't get caught staring at someone's stomach too long otherwise they might think you're a weirdo. But next up we have fingers. So they're the length of your fingers can actually say a lot of very important things about you. Scientists say that if your index finger is longer than your ring finger then it's good if you're a man but bad if you're a woman. Because you're less likely to develop heart disease or prostate cancer if you're a man but if you're a woman there's actually more chance that you could get breast cancer. And if your index finger is smaller than your ring finger then apparently you think more logically and a lot of people with small index fingers go on to serve in the army or jobs like engineering and computer coding. So if you're a man then this is good either way but if you're a woman then it's not so good. But coming up next we have legs. So the shape of your legs can say a lot about you. And most people associate skinny legs with being healthy, however skinny legs can also mean you have a higher chance of heart disease. And people with short legs also have this problem. And if you have long legs then you're more likely to be a lust object because naturally more people are subconsciously attracted to people with longer legs because they believe it's more healthy. And that dates all the way back in history to our predatory ancestors. So if you have long legs then you should be very confident in relationships. But if you have short skinny legs then all I can say is sorry. But next up we have body shape. So I'm sure you guys have all heard about body shapes and the best body shapes to have, but did you know that your body shape can actually say a lot about you as a person? If you have a rectangular body shape then you'd usually make a good athlete, but you do crave junk food because you need more sugar and carbohydrates. And if you have what's usually called a pear body shape then you're more likely to develop ovarian cancer if you're a woman. But there is a trade off because you're also less likely to have a stroke or get heart disease. And if you have a round shaped body then you're more likely to crave junk food with a lot of starch and have more of a chance for high blood pressure and heart disease. And if you have an hour glass figure then you're very healthy and less chance of having any medical problems at all. But coming up next we have toes. So this is a lot like the finger length one from before. Experts say that if you have a very long second toe then you're a born leader who thinks logically and if your third toe is long then that means you're easily motivated and you have a lot of energy. And if you have a short third toe then you usually like to lead a simple life and go with the flow. And now for the most common toe length issue that people have is a big long toe. So if you have a short but large big toe then you're an excellent worker under pressure and a multitasker. But if your big toe is very long and big then you're more intelligent and more creative. 
Next up, we have belly buttons. So when you're born and your umbilical cord is cut, then you're either left with an innie or outy belly button. And if you have an outy belly button, then you're very unusual because only one in 100 people have this. And if you have a small innie belly button, well, that's apparently most attractive according to the University of Michigan. Well, it's not all bad if you have an outy, so don't worry. Because if you have an outy, then your belly button has less bacteria and it's more clean because it sticks out and there's nowhere for any dirt to go. Unlike an innie, which can house all kinds of bacteria. So the question is, would you guys rather be more clean or more attractive. But next up we have hands. So the size of your hand can actually say some pretty interesting things about you. But wait a minute, put the tape measure down because there's a really weird and specific way to measure your hands. And the reason for this is so it's fair for all ages. What you need to do is place your thumb on your elbow and then if you can touch your wrist with your middle finger, then you have large hands. And if you can't reach, then you have small hands. So if you have big hands, then you're said to be more creative and more in touch with your emotions. And if you have small hands, then you're a problem solver and a risk taker. And next up we have skin. So we're surrounded surrounded by skin all over our bodies, so it's pretty easy to tell what's going on with someone by how their skin looks. For example, you guys all know that if someone's looking very pale or green, then they're feeling ill, or if they have red patches, then they have a rash, a spot, or a sunburn, and if their skin looks pale in some places but not in others, then they may have an infection or a medical condition. But skin colour can tell you more than just medical things, for example, emotions. Red can mean you're either angry or embarrassed, pale skin can mean you're very anxious, scared, or tired, and if they're black and white, then they're probably a time traveller. 10 things you didn't know your body could do. So, we all know our bodies are amazing, but with these facts, you'll see that your body is even more unbelievable than you think. And some of the facts on this list can double up as amazing life hacks. So, coming in at number 10, we have stop toothaches. Toothaches are a common problem that almost everyone has from time to time. But there is one easy and quite unknown way to stop them, and it involves using ice. And while many people might assume that you need to put ice on your teeth to stop a toothache, this will actually make it worse because it can freeze the nerves in your teeth. What you should actually do is massage the area between your thumb and forefinger with an ice cube, and that will send cold signals to your brain, and then that will override the pain signals coming from your tooth. This one is really weird because you wouldn't normally think that your hand and teeth teeth are connected, but they are through brain signals and it does actually work pretty well. So try this out next time you have a toothache and the pain should melt away. But next up we have smart smells. So smell is one of our five main senses, but do you ever smell something that makes you feel a certain way or maybe think of a certain memory? Well that's because your sense of smell is closely linked to memory, more so than any of the other senses in fact. And that's because your nasal passage leads directly to your limbic system, which is where your memories and emotions are stored. Smell is also highly emotive, for example if you smell a certain perfume that your partner was wearing, then if you smell that same perfume or even something that smells similar to it, then you'll start to feel a loving emotion. Or if you had a messy breakup, the chance chances are you'll feel sad or angry. And coming up next, we have calm down. So every now and then we get stressed out and need to calm down. And while you might think that heavy breathing or thinking happy thoughts will help with this, well, this trick actually helps a lot more than any of those other ones, despite it being quite unusual. So next time you're overly stressed and need to calm down, blow on your thumb. Do this by putting your thumb in your mouth as if you're sucking on it, but instead of sucking, breathe really hard on it. And that will trigger a set of hidden nerves in your body called vagus nerves, which are linked to your heart, which will slow your heartbeat down. And your decreased heartbeat will then calm down your brain. I don't know how they figure this stuff out, but it works surprisingly well. But next up we have deafness. Have you ever totally missed out on what someone was saying because you were concentrating on something like your phone or a thought in your head? Well, this is called inattention deafness and basically what it means is that we go deaf when we're concentrating on certain things. And while you might think we're just ignoring the sound or filtering it out, we're actually not hearing it at all. The reason why inattention deafness occurs is because our brains can only process so much information at once. And when your brain is absorbing visual information like a phone screen or a thought in your head, that can mean that the things around us like background noise or what other people are saying to us can't be heard. So next time your friend gets angry at you for not paying attention to what they were saying, you can let them know that we're all a little bit deaf. But next up, we have airplane ear popping. So if you've ever been on an airplane, you'll know the nasty feeling your ears get. It usually happens when planes take off and land because of the air pressure inside the plane. And some people suck on candy to stop this or try to sneeze to make their ears pop. But these are either ineffective or not good for you. But there is one safe and effective way to do this. All you need to do is hold your nose and close your mouth and then turn your head to the right until your chin touches your shoulder. Then turn your head to the left until your chin touches your shoulder and then swallow until your right ear pops. And if you do this when the plane is taking off and landing, then you shouldn't need to be covering your ears or eating candy every time you fly. Unless you want to, of course. 
And coming up next, we have stop a tickling throat. So when you have a tickle in your throat that won't stop, it can get really annoying, especially when you're trying to do a voiceover for YouTube. But anyway, a tickle in your throat can really get in the way. And if you don't have a warm drink or cough syrup nearby, then you usually just have to put up with it. But if you use this one simple tip, you'll never have to worry about your throat tickling again. All you need to do is scratch the back of your ear. And if your throat is tickling on one particular side, then scratch the ear on the same side that your throat is tickling. And just doing that should stop any throat tickling fast and and easily. And next up, we have stop brain freeze. So you know when you eat a ton of ice cream and get a really bad brain freeze, there's usually no way to stop it and it can ruin your dessert. Well, here's a crazy thing that your body can do to stop it. All you need to do is press your tongue against the roof of your mouth and this will warm up your mouth. And because brain freeze happens when the nerves that link your mouth to your brain get cold, you need to tip your head back for about six seconds. And this will warm the cold nerves in your mouth which lead to your brain. And then after that, you should be able to eat as much ice cream as you want without getting a brain freeze. And you know, seeing as I told you this trick, maybe Maybe you should save some for me, you know, just send it over. But next up, we have stop pain. So humans aren't invincible and we all feel pain. But with this trick, you can finally stop feeling pain. Well, at least small bursts of pain. For example, getting a shot. So next time you're about to get a shot or you know that you're about to feel a sharp pain, then all you have to do is cough because it blocks the pain receptors in your brain because the brain will be focused on the cough. And this will work for any sharp pains you're about to get. But if you jump off a building and then cough just before you hit the ground, yeah, that might not work as well. Coming up next, we have blindness. So I've already told you guys about inattention deafness, which is where you go deaf when you're concentrating on something. Well, as you can probably guess, inattention blindness is the same thing, but with sight instead of hearing. It was discovered in 1998 after inattention deafness, and it was tested using footage of people passing a ball around, and then a gorilla would walk through and do a dance. And many people in the tests didn't see a gorilla because they were too focused on the other people. And I kind of ruined it for you guys by telling you what happens in the video. But if you try this test out on a friend or family member, then there's a pretty high chance that they won't notice the gorilla. But next up, we have skin peeling. So we all know that eczema can cause your skin to peel off, but there's a very severe type of eczema called dysendrotic eczema, which can cause all of the skin on the palm of your hands or between your fingers or even the soles of your feet to come off, making it impossible to wear shoes without a large amount of skin coming right off. And this can cause people to shed many layers of skin in the worst cases, meaning that their skin is very delicate and the slightest thing, like touching something hot or getting a paper cut, can turn into absolute agony if you ever experience dystrotic eczema. Wow, all I can say is is ouch. 10 things your body parts reveal about you. So I've made 10 odd things your body says about you, but this list has new body parts and in my opinion, these are even more interesting. So check out this video to see what your body is saying about you. So, coming in at number 10, we have nose. We all know that noses are one of the most defining parts of a face. And many people are often described just by their nose. For example, Tom Cruise's big nose and Miley Cyrus's small nose. But nose types aren't as simple as big and small. In fact, there are eight different types of noses and they all have meanings attributed to them. Number one is a Nubian nose and means you're optimistic and likable. Number two is a Greek nose and means you have Greek heritage that you might not even know about. Number three is a beak nose and means you're smart and creative. Number four is an arched nose which means you're usually very professional. Number five is a convex or Roman nose and means you have some Roman heritage. Number six is a straight nose and often means you have a strong personality. Number seven is the concave nose which is often thought to be the perfect nose and means you're probably good looking. And number eight is the hooked nose which means you're determined. So which nose is yours and does it conform to how you act as a person? Next up, we have hair. So, hair color is another very obvious body feature. A study by the University of California found that blonde women are more confident than brunettes or redheads because they're used to getting more attention. Redheads were found to be the most sensitive to pain and the most self-conscious, probably because some kids face childhood teasing for having red hair. And while lots of bald men think that they have it bad, this might not be entirely true. It was found that the average IQ of a bald man was 119, which is above the average of 115. So, would you rather have hair or be four IQ? Few points smarter. Oh, and guys, if you don't have the hair for the trait that you want, then sorry, but dyeing your hair won't help, as this only works for natural color. Next up, we have eyebrows. Staying on the topic of body hair, eyebrows are another part of you, which you might not think says much about your personality because they're so small, but a Chinese face reading company can see aspects of your personality solely based on tiny details in your eyebrows. This only works if you're above the age of 15 though, because otherwise your eyebrows might not have finished growing out. So if you have messy eyebrows, you're said to be less careful with money. And if your eyebrows point up, then you have a strong work ethic. If you have very straight eyebrows, then this is seen as good looking, so you're likely very handsome. If you have 
have sparse eyebrows, then you're focused on work more than fun. And if you have thick eyebrows, then you're likely healthy and active, as thick hair is a key sign of health. Next up is your behind. You might not expect it, but your backside can tell people a lot about you. Studies show that a round behind can suggest a person is happy and healthy. If your backside is flat, then you might be prone to vanity, and a pear-shaped backside suggests you're very patient and maternal. And if you have a muscular backside, then you're likely very confident and healthy. So next time you get caught staring, just tell them you were trying to look at what their personality was like, and they'll 100% forgive you. Top 10s accept no responsibility if they in fact don't forgive you and slap you in the face. Next up we have breasts. Talking of things you shouldn't get caught staring at, a woman's breasts can inform you about their personality. Even though it's a stereotype that a busty girl is unintelligent, that's just a rumor spread by Hollywood. Women with large breasts actually tend to be smarter, with 9 more IQ points than the average woman. And this data was taken from a study of over 2,000 women in Chicago. Another thing the study found was that women with big breasts are very maternal, while women who have smaller breasts are often less confident and sometimes more self-conscious and vain. But on the whole, women who have smaller breasts breasts actually keep in marriages longer than big-breasted women. Whether that's got anything to do with breast size or down to coincidence, it does give you something to think about. Next up we have face. We've covered many facial features in this video, but what about the general shape of your face? Well, this can also give away a lot of clues about your personality and it's all to do with the width of your face. People with wide faces, on average, cheat on their partners more than people with narrow faces. And these statistics are specifically higher with men with wide faces. Narrow faced people are said to be more honest and tend to cheat a whole lot less. So next time you're on your first date or swiping possible dates around on your smartphone, pay close attention to their face and if they have a wide face, then write Right swipe. Or is it left swipe? Well, do whatever you Tinder folk do. Coming up next is forehead. So in 2011, a Chinese scientist called Dadishi Toth said there were a variety of personality traits which are directly related to your forehead. If you have a flat forehead, then you're very logical and usually good at math or science. If you have a wide forehead, then this indicates intelligence and practicality. People with well-rounded, deep foreheads are said to be not as intelligent but incredibly loyal, which is similar to those with indented foreheads who are said to be unintelligent, and people with receding foreheads who often tend to act wild and irrational. Which forehead are you? Next up we have feet. So there are various things associated with your feet which has been found to reveal personality traits. Those with flat feet are often hardworking and healthy, while those with narrow feet are often vain and go with the flow. If you suffer a lot from ingrown toenails then you likely feel very vulnerable, and if you have bunions on your feet then you're on your feet a lot, a hard worker and selfless. Oh and guys, despite what the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air might tell you, a guy's feet have no link to his you know what. Coming up next, we have eyes. One thing that you probably notice right away when you meet someone is the color of their eyes. Well, eye color can have very specific meanings attributed to them. Brown-eyed people are often warm-hearted and care about others. Those with blue eyes are said to be more focused on emotions. Green-eyed people are often highly intelligent and great at multitasking. Light blue eyes can often mean the person has a lot of physical strength, and those with gray eyes are often very private and emotional. And people with eyes like this are probably wearing contact lenses. And finally, on this list we have hands. Whether it's a handshake before a meeting, or a high five at a sports game, we use our hands to communicate a lot. But there are a few things that you can reveal about someone's personality and lifestyle from their hands. Those with longer middle fingers than index fingers are usually less dominant and confident. However, if somebody has a large little finger, then they're probably very confident and outgoing. And if someone has long index fingers, then they're said to be very attractive. But another study shows that people with long index fingers are often bad drivers. So next time you get in your Uber and the driver has a large index finger, then you might want to hold on tight. Thanks for watching, check out some more videos on screen right now, leave a like if you enjoyed, and if you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Subscribe!